Okay, folks, let's get into a bit more detail and then I'll show you a simpler way to understand how orbitals are filled. So up until now, we should understand that any element's atomic number, atomic mass, tells us how many protons reside in the nucleus. And how many protons are in the nucleus tells us which element it is. But we can also use the periodic table to tell us how many electrons any element has as well. So for example, when we were just practicing filling the various orbitals from low energy to high energy, we were really talking about how each of these elements has electrons, how many they have, and where they go. So for example, hydrogen with an atomic mass of one has one proton, we know that. But atomic hydrogen also has one electron. So, if hydrogen has a single electron, it should go into the 1s orbital. And as chemists, we draw it just like that, as like a single-headed arrow. So hydrogen would just have this one electron sitting in the 1s orbital. Helium has two electrons, remember two electrons per orbital, we would put the second electron right in there with the first, filling up the 1s orbital. But once we fill up 1s, we need to jump into 2s, right? So I like to always show this picture of the periodic table because it shows us very neatly how electrons fill the orbitals. You can see in this image of the periodic table that any element on the far left, its electrons are going to reside in the 4s as we start to fill. And if we kept filling, as we moved right across the periodic table, we'd start to put electrons into the d orbital. If we're up here, and then after the d, the p orbital, for example. However, if you we were down here at the bottom, let's say at the level of the 6s orbital, we'd move into the d, then the f, then back into the d, and into the P. So this type of view of the periodic table is helpful because it shows us exactly how orbital filling works. However, when we look at a periodic table in a textbook, it usually looks like this so that it fits onto a single page. It doesn't as clearly show you how orbital filling works, but it still kind of gives you what we call the s block, where the electrons are filling in the s orbitals, or the p block, where electrons are filling in the p orbital, for example. So with this review, folks, we should be able to kind of guess how electrons are filled and which orbitals they are going into simply based on where an element resides on the periodic table. Up next, we will talk about atomic radius to jump into one clear periodic trend.